In this video, we're going to look at understanding the vertex form. So as you can see here, the vertex form is f of x equals a parentheses x minus h squared plus k. The a, the h, and the k all talk about transformations that are done to the parent form, which is f of x equals x squared. So the a tells you how much it's either going to stretch or compress. So if a is greater than 1, it stretches. If a is between 0 and 1, it's a compress. The other thing a can tell you is if it, it reflects or stays the same. If a is positive, it's opening up. If a is negative, it reflects across the x-axis. Now h tells you how much it's going to translate to the left or to the right. H, it's always going to be opposite of the sign that's there. So if it, the sign in the problem is negative, so it's negative 1, it would actually translate to the right, positive 1. If it was a positive 1 there, it would translate to the left, negative, to negative 1. So it's always the opposite sign of whatever's in the H. The K tells you your vertical translation. That's going to be up or down. And that basis is exactly the same as the sign. So it's a positive one, it's going to go up. If it's a negative one, it would go down. The other two things we want to look at is this thing down here called the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is a line that goes straight through the middle of my graph. So it goes right through the vertex. And what that does is it splits the graph in half. So the right side is exactly the same as the left side. This is going to help us actually do some graphs because I can take points on one side and mirror them across or reflect them across the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is always x equals h, and h is from your vertex. The other piece on the graph we want to look at are the x-coordinates are zeros. So this is where the parabola actually goes through the x-axis. Now, it typically goes through twice, but it could go through once or it could not go through at all depending on where the graph actually is. In this problem, it goes through twice goes through right there at 1 and right there at 5. When you're looking at zero as a function, that means when I take that x value and I plug it into the problem, my y value, the answer that I get out of the problem, would be 0. And that's why they're called the zero function, because the output or the um, answer in those cases is going to be 0 when you plug those in. 